Happy Thanksgiving. Wow. Okay. That was a lot. Happy Thanksgiving. Kirsten, <laughs> that wasn't good. All right. We, we will alter this after. I'm very happy that you're there because I put a lot of time into this show uh, and I was really disappointed that I could not get a live stream going and I, I still don't know why. Welcome back. Happy Thanksgiving. Goretti, thank you. Great to see you. And I can actually see you now. All right. Ryan, ba-boom, ba-boom. Great to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Peace and love to you too. Happy Thanksgiving. Dominic, happy Thanksgiving. I know that you had your Thanksgiving in Quebec, um, but thank you for your Thanksgiving wishes here. Uh, we are finally celebrating ours. Okay. Thank you so much. Lisa, happy Thanksgiving. Great to see you. I'm going to get started. I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. I have been sitting here for so long, all set. Even my Thanksgiving earrings flipped around in the meantime. I flipped, my earrings flipped. I've been sitting here in my stupid jam sandwich Thanksgiving shirt, ready to go. Now it's time. Happy Thanksgiving. So it has been an exciting morning this morning. The theme for the show today is the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade, which we've been watching. I literally just uh, shut it off. Dawn, great to see you in East Michigan. You're watching the parade. I just shut it off for volume. And I'm also very selfish. The reason I just shut the um, parade off is because one, one of my best friends is in it. She was just in it. She was holding that balloon of the safari character called something like monkey, something Duffy or something. He had like a safari hat. She was in it and I was standing in front of the TV photographing it like it was 1985 and I was trying to record a song or get Joe Elliott on the, you know, on a Def Leppard video. I'm just standing there with the camera like this. It was so exciting. And then this happened. Oh man, Ruth, good to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. The theme of the episode today is the Macy's Day Parade. So I hope that you do have it on in the background. I'm going to put it back on quietly. I want to watch it with you as a sideline because this is our subject today. Hang on one second. Let me bring her back. I was afraid it was going to make too much noise. And obviously we were having a struggle. Arian, can you put the show back on? Yeah. All right. I think, we, I think we might be getting it together at last. Macy's Day Parade. This is our subject for today. Did you see the pattern that I put out this morning? I've been working on this pattern for a little while, ever since I went to the Norman Rockwell Museum. There we go. Joyce, happy Thanksgiving in Pennsylvania. Great to see you. Chrissy, happy Thanksgiving. Great to see you. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago, it wasn't even a month, I don't think, I went to the Norman Rockwell Museum and I saw the exhibit on Tony Sarg. And I got super, super excited and inspired um, because he was a great sort of uh, display person, window display person for Macy's. And he built a lot of um, great vignettes and, you know, things inside the store for shopping and inside the windows and stuff. And he was a puppeteer. And that's one of the reasons that my friend Kim is handling one of the balloons in the parade today because she's a, pu she's a professional puppeteer. Uh, so she was allowed to. Exciting. But... Um, Man, it's just been a chaotic, um, I'm half watching it over there and watching you. It's been a chaotic morning. If you've been watching, here comes Pikachu. The kids, I knew the kids were going to miss Pikachu. Here he comes. It's so exciting, the history of this thing. Watching these characters come down the street, hearing all of the bands play. Diane, great to see you. Jenny, great to see you. It's just fun. Isn't it exciting? Oh, we've been super excited. But I went to see this exhibit and it featured Tony Sarg, who... I think I told you this when I went. It was such a great um, sort of history story. Macy, like the original Mr. Macy who opened the store, um, wanted to bring people to the, the store to shop for Christmas starting immediately after Thanksgiving. So he was trying to think of ways that he could get people to come in and shop so soon after the holiday before. And he decided to have a parade, right? This is like in the 1920s. And the parade was great. And I'm going to show you some pictures from the early parade. Let me show you some of the ones I pulled offline. Macy's Parade is one of the few things that still feels like it brings the majority of the country. Absolutely. And, you know, that's what they've been saying on the show, too. I listened while uh, the president spoke to uh, Al Roker and was saying, let's just let's just be together and let's just have fun and let's just have one of our traditions and let it be, let it be a happy day, you know. But this parade has been a thing since the 20s. Let me show you some of these early shots of the parade. Oh, this is the ad for it this year. So that's that's exciting. 
Um, if you aren't living in the country and you don't know about the parade, you probably think we're crazy right now. But this is such a big deal. And it starts at like 8.30 in the morning. This is my friend Kim a few hours ago. This is her at like 8 a.m. this morning. And this was the balloon that she handled. She's also in our group. She's in our rug hooking and punch needle club group. Um, she's done some rug hooking with me because she lives like one street away. But this was her balloon, that monkey Duffy. And you see how it has this giant net on it. And as soon as they cut that net, that thing goes up in the air. I mean, how exciting is this? Guess how many handlers it takes to carry this one balloon through the town? Just guess. I'm, I'm not gonna answer. I'm not gonna tell you the answer until. This is the balloon, right? This is when they tested it in the sky. So she literally, five minutes before I went live, she carried this balloon up the street. I just think this is so exciting. Even if you count the strings, you're not going to believe how many people are needed to carry this thing up the street. Because there's a delay, I'm going to tell you she's one of 90, 90 handlers for one balloon. And this balloon made its debut this year. This is a brand new balloon along with at least three others. I, Ruth, 25 sounds normal, but it's 90. I mean, how crazy is that? Jay, happy Thanksgiving. So she literally, Jay, I'm just saying how Kim just took off down the street past the Macy's storefront with this monkey D. Duffy or whatever balloon. This is an anime character that I don't know. Getting back to what we're talking about, Tony Sarg, right? This is the first uh, balloon. This is the first balloon uh, parade in 1927. So up until that time, so cool, up until that time, Macy wanted to have a parade and it was a bunch of floats and it was exciting. And the whole point, right, this is advertising. The whole point was that Santa would arrive at Macy's, enter and stay there for the entire season. And then all of the kids could come, miracle on uh, 34th Street style and, and sit on his lap and say what they wanted and he would be at Macy's, right? And then, of course, all of the other department stores also needed to have a Santa. But the first time, the point was to, for the public to see him arriving, entering the store. And then, of course, they would build these elaborate um, sort of sets for him that became a whole department. Different themes for different department stores, right? The pink pig was like the big one in one of the Georgia department stores. It was like a, a pig train and everyone went to ride the pink pig. It was a big deal. Macy's had its own thing from year to year and different themes. And the parade did bring people into the store, but Macy wanted it to be bigger. So he asked Tony Sarg, who's a puppeteer and already working with him, to design some floats because floats were a known thing, right? Putting things on floats and bringing them up the street. He asked Tony Sarg to design some floats. So quite rightly, Tony Sarg designed floats that were based on the, the actual animals at the zoo in Central Park, which makes sense because those are the real animals, but they looked really scary. I'm gonna show you some photos and it scared the kids. It scared the crowd because they were enormous. So then they said to him, Okay, so that didn't work great. What can we do next year? We're not going to give up on this yet. What can we do next year to make these big um, float things that are exciting and advertise and makes the parade really long and a really big event that don't scare people? And Tony Sarg said brilliantly, why don't we make puppets upside down? In other words, we'll make them into balloons, but we're holding the strings from underneath them. And that was it. That is 1927. And that is the genesis of this parade. Carol, good to see you. <laughs> so this is the first turkey as it stood. And this is a Tony Sarg style turkey. Now, it doesn't look like the contemporary turkey. The contemporary turkey that we see in the parade, like the one we've seen today, that started the parade in that amazing moment where I get so emotional about this stuff. Outside of Macy's, they've got that giant turkey on top of the front of the store. If you're half watching the show, they just showed them right there. And the, tur the turkey balloon actually came through or the turkey float, which is an inflatable. And that was super cool because the turkey passed the turkey. Anyway, it was one of those weird moments in time. This was the original turkey and it looked a bit cartoony and it was pretty close to the ground, right? Considering. And the handlers were dressed up for that first parade. They're dressed up like clowns, right? Because they were, go they were bending over backwards to make sure that it wasn't scary, right? Because the year before it was like traumatically scary for children and adults. 
And so they are dressing up silly like clowns. And if you do watch the parade, you notice that the tradition of the handlers wearing matching clothing to the balloon they handle still still carries on, right? I noticed that Kim had on like a safari outfit when she when she went by. God, it's so exciting. So this is going to look familiar because I put out a free pattern today. If you are also watching the parade and you're also excited and maybe you don't want to do a traditional turkey for Thanksgiving, but maybe you want to work on a pattern today, you could download this pattern. And this is the one I put up as a free pattern on ribbon candy hooking. The link to it is both in our Facebook group and in this video. It's also if you go to ribbon candy hooking and you look up Tony Sarg at Macy's, this is, <laughs> Kirsten says, that was black and white when the clowns weren't scary. No, that's true. <laughs> and people, are, I think, are more scared of clowns now than they used to be. But this pattern is there for you. And as the show goes on, I just want to plant the seed. It's gridded or ungridded. I just want to plant the seed. This is like Felix the cat who's behind him. And Felix was actually the first balloon that was ever done. What's up? Uh, in a minute, there's going to be a wet clean board. Okay. Okay, dog is going to be jumping up to visit us soon, um, having taken his Thanksgiving bath before the party. So we can look forward to a disgusting wet dog uh, making a cameo appearance. Dragon Nation, God, I remember when we painted exactly hand turkeys and watched the parade at school. Isn't that a great memory? Um, I'll have to show you later in the day because I did the hand turkeys with the kids' hands on a piece of burlap. Oh, here he comes. On a piece of burlap. I, good thing good thing we got a warning. He's like doing circuits around the house. Circular. Come here, Buttons. Come here, Buttons. Come here. Come here. We'll see him later. Thanksgiving, Pup. Um, we did the hands of the kids. Um, this was maybe five years ago on a thin piece of burlap. And I just hooked them all into turkeys. And my sister has that hanging up. She'll have that hanging up on the mantle when we arrive for dinner. Right after I finish the show, we're going to head over there. But that is a great thing to hook is a hand puppet with a turkey, right? So this pattern is there for if you want to do something different, but I want to plant the seed in your head. It's a very tall vertical pattern. And if you decide that you love this pattern and you want to do the turkey, you could, for example, when I hook it, I'm probably going to take the feet out of the front because I want the turkey to be the first. I put the Felix cat, which doesn't really look like Felix, but that's the Tony Sarg version. Um, behind him because he is the first uh, balloon. He was the first one on 1927, the first day, the lead balloon, Felix the Cat. And you could actually extend the skyline, extend the clowns, flip them around to make them look different or give them different costumes and add other balloons that are your favorite characters. What a great, uh, what a great project that would be. I'm definitely doing this. <laughs> Dragon Nation. Clowns were always scary. <laughs> I know. They, there is something um, sinister about clowns. Absolutely. Well, let's see. Let's come over here. Now, I want to look at some buttons. I want to look at some um, pictures of the early parade. So, for example, this is the first parade. This is 1927. Um, they do have one or two balloons. Right? They definitely have Felix and the turkey, but they have mostly floats still. And you can see this is what everyone was waiting for. The beautiful white horses coming from the North Pole, and Santa is sitting either on a jingle bell or, or a globe. But that's Santa, and they're going to stop in front of Macy's, which is how this whole tradition of, of the different acts and uh, floats and balloons stopping in front of Macy's and, and doing a little performance or, you know, a band number. That comes from this tradition of Santa stopping in front of Ma Macy's, getting down off the float, going into the store, followed by tons of people. How crazy fun would that be? Honestly, can you imagine at 1927 having a child that actually watches Santa climb down off the globe float and enter the store? I mean, this is stuff that people would be talking about like in their 90s, right? And this is Felix the cat. And you can see, again, these early balloons are, number one, quite small. He needed four handlers. And this is more in the style of a puppet or a marionette. This is a Tony Sarg, just as you would expect, right? It hasn't gone really big scale yet. They still have all their motored floats, right? This is all stuff that they're revisiting, but they're not. You can say hi. Yep. Yeah. Hi. You want to come? You can come on camera and say hi. I just took a bath and he's running all around. Yeah. I, I made the catch for him, but then I just ran upstairs. Here, sit down and say hi. Oh, look, a Pokemon balloon. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yep. Oh, my it God. Is. It's, a poke, it's the Pokemon on the um, Pokeball. And, and what's that, Eevee behind him? Yeah. It's, it's exciting. It's exciting. You enjoying watching the parade? Mm-hmm. What was your favorite balloon so far? Um. 
Is it the Pikachu? Wonder it was Bread. SpongeBob. The, the Wonder she's Bread. She's laughing because there was a Wonder Bread float. Did you see that? And I mean, there was, you missed like the Jolly Green Giant, right? Like they, they do all kinds of advertising. I liked the Wimpy Kid. Diary and it, the whole thing, the, the Diary of a Wimpy cheese. Kid was very cool. And oh, look at how good Pikachu looks. Look at the size of that thing. Um, she, it's funny to her how they feature brands like Wonder Bread and, you know, Like there's beans. a float coming down that says Wonder Bread. Yeah, but Wonder Bread float had the band Chicago on it. And then we heard, you're the meaning in my life. You're, you're the, the inspiration. inspiration. And she loves that song because I've been singing that to her since you were a tiny baby, right? All right, let's go on with the show. And the I will, that's Diana. Dragon Nation. That's, that's, one of, that's one of the viewers who's that's chatting cool. and saying, um, the clowns were always scary. And remembering about how at school you would put your hand down and draw around it and turn it into a turkey. And remember how Jessica has the thing at her house that we'll see today with the turkeys and then I hooked the way that you and Teddy drew your turkeys? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, she sees it once a year. It's my turkey. It's Yeah, that's your turkey, but it needs a, it needs a little bit of bling. Can I share my turkey design that I made? Yes, today? yes, you can share your turkey design. I'll put this up too, can actually. Can I share all my designs or just a turkey? Yeah, please? no, you can just share your turkey for today. You're going to show us on the phone? Mm -hmm. Are you going to make it a thing that people Here, let me get? hold it up. Yeah, I'll put this up as a free pattern too. She did an excellent turkey um, design, and I forgot to put it up. I'm sorry, Joss. But this might be something that's fun to hook too. It really is an excellent turkey. Something quick that you could do literally today. Just print it out on the printer, hold it up to the window, transfer it onto whatever backing you have, small piece, and just hook one little thing today just for the table or to put into a little a little frame, right? Dominique Macy's Parade takes place in New York. It does. It the it it's it's centered around Macy's department store. So it goes through many many streets for many blocks. Here's the um uncolored yeah, so this, I'm going to put this up right after the show. That's the turkey no, itself. Swipe up, swipe up. Swipe sideways. Oh, oh, that's the wrong one. And this is one of the colored versions for ideas. You made that one, right? I think I did that yeah, color Yeah, Mom one. colored that. Yeah, we went out for a nice dinner last night. We were fooling around with turkeys. This is a wacky one. And that's your, that's your wacky colored one, and that's your original color plan for turkey. It looks so weird on the camera. No, it looks, that that's a great pattern, Joss. That's a good pattern, and you could, t you could write something around it, like the leaves, you could write scattered joy or something like that, like a little quote. Go upstairs and ask Papa to put that out online uh, right now. How about now. this? We don't need pictures of your crazy friends, Joss, please. Pretty, Off she goes. It's clear. No! Come on. No, let me finish the show. Go. Go tell Papa to put it up. So, sorry about... Sorry about that. Back to content. So, um, 1926. So, you know, there's stuff like this in these early parades, like a bunch of nurses, right, with the car and the Christmas tree. It's almost functioning like a maypole, which I think is a beautiful design. Coming up the street with these beautiful, like, snowbell dresses on. It's so pretty. Lots of animals in the early shows, as you would imagine, right? You would fully imagine um, there to be a lot of circus animals, and it's just the way that it was, right? Different than today. And stuff like this. Now, I mean, I don't know how you feel about this, but I can perfectly see why we don't see Pinocchio anymore. It's very odd. I think this is another Tony Sarg. But the thing about this parade is that it is, from year to year, it really captures pop culture. It's a free banner, right? It's a free pattern. Yep, yep, it's a free pattern. After, we'll keep it as a free pattern through Christmas, and then in the new year, we'll put it into your collection. It'll be a, it will not be free anymore. Um, you know, every year is a time capsule. And the interesting thing about it, you know, as we look around us is, in, as I glance at the TV, the characters that they choose to have from year to year say everything about contemporary pop culture, like at this minute and I think that's one of the really interesting things about the parade is oh here he is wet boy oh well his breath doesn't smell any better but his fur does good thing he took a little bath a little no, baby's bath he's a oh he is a wet dog so at this moment you know Pinocchio was a big deal right we're going to see a lot of Disney characters early in the timeline um, of the parade I and I know. Joss is saying she wishes that the characters Phineas and Ferb were balloons. And the thing is, they might be in the future because the balloons take time to make. Um, characters like this, right? This is a 19, this is a 1920s character as well. Um, this is one of the early ones. I think this is 24. This is before the float era. 
So they were already running the parade, but unsuccessfully, right? So not unsuccessfully, there's people here, but there's not a crazy amount of people here. But you can see how this would be scary for people. It's very cool in that I don't know how, um, how this works. I mean, I can't imagine um, at all how they got this thing to stand and walk for city blocks. But you can see how some of these early characters, before we started looking at early Disney movies, I heard that, Joss, and you're on camera. She did a toot. Um, why they would be scary for people. So, for example, I don't know how you feel about this, um, but you notice that there's mostly adults in the audience. It is a bit scary. It's, it's a saber-toothed tiger. Um, and this is one of the floats. So this is the pre-balloon era. This is one of the floats that was probably designed by Tony Sarge based on a tiger from the local zoo. Um, but you could see how this could be disturbing to people and less festive than it meant to be on a day that was about Santa Claus. So everything in life is trial and error, isn't it? This is also some of the early stuff from the first couple of years of the balloons. And you can see as soon as they switched to puppets, well, they were hand painting them, right? They were painting them in a shed. And I showed that on a past episode of um, Coffee Time. But you can see we've got a fish, the thing after that, some kind of an animal, but he doesn't look dangerous. And then around the block, you can see making his way around the corner is like a roly poly. So this is way more benign than what we've been seeing so far. And you're seeing these clowns are handling all of the balloons. So while there are like, looks like there's Boy Scouts in between, there are clowns actually handling all the balloons. So that, that stays the same, unlike now, when we're seeing different costumes on the handlers as the balloons go through. Now, this is an interesting one, too, because, again, this is probably 1927. Some of these are not dated online, but it's a crocodile. And this could also be scary, but I think he's a, he's a pretty friendly-looking crocodile. I'm just noticing it was still the era of the trolley. Do you notice that on the tracks? How cute is that? But very, very low to the ground, doesn't need a lot of handlers. Um, they are inflating them quite well in hangers and things like that, and then literally bringing them over the same way they are right now. But now, as you saw earlier, the picture that Kim posted, they're netting them. Now, so, so I'm sorry, no, this was 1933. That did have a date, 1933. And it's just, it's just a crocodile alligator, right? So it's interesting because early on, we're not really... There doesn't seem to be a huge push to to um, show characters that everyone would know because media didn't work the same way, right? If I know something or I watch maybe a radio show or whatever, we maybe don't have the same idea of what that character looks like. Not everybody's buying magazines. I mean, everybody maybe sees them, but maybe not in remote places. Can you get out from under the table right now, like immediately? Um Get away. From, if you're not going to be helpful in the show, you need to be, have be a Thanksgiving girl and get away. Mm. Okay. Or you can okay. sit with me. Or you can sit with me and not shake the table by being underneath it because nobody needs... I've had enough problems today. Anyway, sorry. I'm not being very festive, am I? So 1934 <laughs> is the first year... Okay, don't come near the table again. You just bumped it twice. 1934 is the first year that Mickey comes. And, you know, Mickey is just... And by the way, January... 1st of 2024, um, Mickey Mouse, the old Mickey Mouse is copyright free, right? So if you see people suddenly using the old time steamboat type Mickey in designs, it's because he goes copyright free in 2024. So that's coming up really soon. But 1934, we're seeing the first Mickey balloon in the parade. And today I didn't see, I might've missed it. Um, but I saw Mickey performing as a character on the ground, but I didn't see a Mickey balloon this year. And this is the very thing, isn't it? Sometimes they keep a balloon. Sometimes they uh, retire a balloon. This is 1940, right? And this is a giant clown. So we can see a few things from these pictures that are really time capsules of Thanksgiving Day. The, the signage, right? Like this is signage in Times Square. It's very, very different. And we're seeing a clown that if he's a logo for food or something like that, like, you know, Wonder Bread, Jolly Green Giant, if he's a logo, I don't recognize him. But he was in the show for quite a few years. Um, so he's 1940. 
and this is a little bit later. This is even later. This is probably 19, uh, late 50s, 1960. And I see an updated Thanksgiving turkey. I see a pilgrim woman uh, down on the ground. And I don't recognize that character who is, you know, the big one. If you recognize him, I mean, he looks like a lion, but I don't recognize him. Of course, these are characters that I probably didn't grow up with because they're a little bit too um, early for me. Another beautiful Tony Sarg character, right? I mean, it was really hard choosing what to put into this pattern for today, the free pattern, because I really like the look of a lot of these characters. In terms of folk art, this is folk art. This is one of a kind thing that was designed by an artist, hand painted. You know, its use is um, utilitarian. I mean, it is decorative, but it's a, it's an it's an advertising logo. And I mean, he's he's walking through the city on a parade route. This is his job. This is what he does. Wait till you find out what happened at the end of the parade to the early balloons. Now, you could see how this is right on the edge. Um, I forget what character this is. This is one of Tony Sarg's characters, but I think this is from a book. So ones like this, people might start recognizing from you know famous storybooks for children. We're starting to see characters who appear in comics, in children's literature, um, in radio plays. You know, the more media starts to circulate uh, to the masses, the more people have a fixed idea of what a certain character looks like and the more likely Macy's would be to create the balloon of it. At the end of the parade in the very early years, they actually released the balloons. Now, this is incredible. So this is a dachshund balloon that is a Tony Sarg and they, at the end of the parade, the handlers just let go of the ropes. That's what was done and the deal was People knew back then that if you found the balloon when it came back to Earth, I mean, it could it could land anywhere, but if you found the balloon, you could bring it to Macy's and they would give you like a, a gift certificate. And people searched for the balloons. But two things happened because people always have to ruin stuff, don't they? Two things happened um, that made it impossible to keep going with this, I think, incredible tradition. One of them was... When the balloons came to ground or came into the water and people got a hold of them, they started cutting them up and many people bringing them into Macy's uh, for gift certificates. And that became very expensive to Macy's. And they said, can't do that anymore. But the really deal breaking thing was that a balloon got stuck in the uh, propeller of like a small plane. It didn't take the plane down, but it almost did. Now, that was a bad day for the pilot of that plane. It must be like that movie. Joss, what's that move? Final Destination, isn't it? Where like people meet their end in very odd ways and it's almost like, this was your day, I guess. When you're flying a plane and uh, a giant Macy's Day balloon hits your propeller and almost uh, ends your life, that's one of those moments, isn't it? Really funny. But um, yeah, this tradition obviously um, had to go sooner rather than later. But I just thought it was interesting to think about them just letting go of these enormous balloons. So if a character made a reappearance, it was because the balloon was brought back to Macy's and they were able to whatever, patch it, paint it, whatever. The person got the gift certificate and the balloon could appear in the next show. I mean, that really is, it's, it's a moment in time, isn't it? So as we look at the parade, we go through the years and this is the 1940s, right? Very patriotic. We're in the war years until World War II ends in 1945. So we would see Uncle Sam and a lot of patriotic balloons around those years. The, the, there were at least two years in World War II that the uh, parade was canceled because they needed to use helium and rubber for war efforts. And they weren't able to do, I think it was only two years. So... Um, yeah, you do, you know, you adapt and do what you have to do at, at that moment in time. Because again, this parade represents uh, pop, pop culture. It really is the epitome of pop culture. If you've been watching, you know, they're showing people singing and stuff who are popular on TikTok, who I've never heard of. The kids know some of these characters and balloons and acts, but I certainly don't. You know, I recognized, obviously, no, it's still on. I recognized Chicago. Um, 
the band, but, but I didn't, I didn't really recognize, I, I recognized, um, one of the bands did a nice tribute to Jimmy Buffett. They did Cheeseburger in Paradise as a big band song with like a hundred piece band. I mean, those moments I think are just amazingly, uh, moving and spectacular, but not just, it's not just kind of documenting what's popular right now, but, um, things that have happened this year, like the passing of a music legend, Jimmy Buffett there, like it's also being kind of immortalized in this event. Oh, here we go. It looks like we're getting to the end. It's going to end at noon. So this is also, um, this is a 1950s era, a little bit later. This is a space cadet. And of course, in the 1950s, they would have to start using characters who were part of pop culture, right? Space travel by Joss. All of this was exciting and mysterious and popular. So a space cadet goes into the Macy's parade. Uh, also in the 1950s, Mighty Mouse makes his debut. Um, I can see the living Christmas tree is on right now. It's all of the people sitting on a Christmas tree float and singing Christmas songs, right? That's called the living Christmas tree. So beautiful. And it's funny, uh, also 1950s is Popeye comes in in the 1950s. It's interesting to think about when the different characters come in. So the next part of the show is a guessing game for you where I'm going to show you a famous float and I want you to guess what year it came into the parade. It's just going to be a guess because you're going to be surprised. Like if Popeye came in in the 1950s, wasn't he, wasn't Popeye already known like in the 1920s, I would think, like as a comic, but he doesn't appear until the 1950s. So it takes time. It takes time until they're absolutely sure if they're going to introduce like um, a, a known character. Um, they, they seem to want to be very, 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 very sure, not a hundred percent, but a thousand percent sure that it's a balloon that people are going to recognize and love and that it has a lasting sort of power to it, that it would be fun to see it like for future years. So let's look at some of them and play this game. So for example, to me, it was surprising that Popeye uh, was a 1950s era balloon. What about, what about Donald Duck, right? We already talked about Mickey. What year do you think Donald Duck entered the parade? I'll give you a minute to guess. When you put your answer in because of the parade, uh, because of the delay, do like DD and then write the year that you think Donald Duck came into the parade. Um, we'll wait here for just a second and then I'm going to switch to the next slide and you can be guessing and I know our guesses are going to overlap but it's still super fun. Let me show you one more and tell me what year you think DD. So Jay says 19, oh, the heart is covering the 1945. That's a good guess. That's not right, but that's a good guess. It's earlier. I'll tell you that it's earlier. 1942. No, it's actually even earlier. It's 1934. So um, that's quite early, but I guess either Disney must have sponsored it um, because Mickey Mouse is 1934. Oh, he's the same year. So they're both. Okay, so this is the debut year for him too. They both debuted at the same time. Interesting. That must mean that, I mean, I don't know a lot about early Disney history, but that must mean that Donald Duck was quite an important character early. I always thought it was kind of Mickey and then they added the characters, but he's actually in front of Mickey in the order of the balloons. Um, interesting. So how about this one. What year do you think Snoopy entered the parade? Now, I have to say, over the years, there have been many Snoopies, right? But when do you think the first year was that we saw Snoopy as a balloon? If you were watching the parade from the start, you saw this year, 2023, they de debuted, oh, Cher, Cher is singing right now. God, she looks good they debuted the newest Snoopy balloon, and that was Snoopy Beagle Scout. Did you see that earlier? It was an, it was actually a flying balloon, not a standing balloon. So he was down on his stomach like he was flying like Superman. And it was Snoopy dressed up as like a Beagle Scout with Woodstock on his hat. And it was super cute. This is the first year it's been seen. It was one of the handful of debut balloons for this year. So Snoopy debuted in 1968 which I guess sounds right. Um, 
I love the Peanuts, but I don't have a good handle on the timeline of, the, of their crazy success. I'm wondering if it was kind of the late 60s, if that sounds right. In any case, this balloon first came into the show in 1968. So what a lot of fun to turn that into part of a pattern, too. He could be in line. What about this balloon? What year do you think Superman came into the parade? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you it is quite early. It is quite early because you know the balloon started in 1926. And you can tell that this is an early one also because of the way that it's made. It's quite good. And I have to say, what and this, this is enormous, right? Because like the 1926 balloons, remember how low to the ground they were? This one is really a huge balloon, as it should be, because it's Superman. And everybody would have recognized Superman. 1935, 1938, it's actually 1927, really early. To notice, I, I was going to say, does he have a nipple? I think it's just the um, armature thing underneath him, right, that's, that's keeping the shape of it. It seems to me like these early balloons deflate a lot less than the ones, for example, in today's parade. There were quite a few balloons in today's parade, parade that, like, um, diary of a wimpy kid his hand was completely shriveled like it was flat and just flopping in the wind um, there were quite a few balloons today where um, yeah a huge sort of element of the design was completely deflated now what year do you think the tin man debuted right this is the tin man from the wizard of oz so that should give you an idea of the timeline. Um, they didn't debut all of the Wizard of Oz characters. I think we've said this before. Is the, was the Tin Man Ray Bolger? Was that the Tin Man? Um, I think the character who played the Tin Man was quite famous. Well, he was quite famous. I think it was Ray Bolger. But you could see why it being a famous character and it being a famous actor, um, why they would want to put this, this balloon first into the show. I don't know if afterward they did any of the other characters from The Wizard of Oz. I don't, I can't picture any others. But this is going to be another, oh, you're really close, Kirsten. This is 1939. So you're only one year off. So interesting to look at the timeline. It's pretty hard to research. I would have thought there would be, how about this one? What year do you think the Smurfs uh, debuted? Um, I would think there'd be a really definitive timeline. Like, I feel like Macy's should have a timeline, you know, on their website that shows you when every single balloon in the history of the parade debuted, right? Because it's, it's fun. It's something interesting to think about. Smurfs. Now, I feel like this was a very late debut because I know I was watching the Smurfs in the 80s. And this balloon does not debut until 2008. I feel like maybe, Shani, I would have said exactly the same year. I would have said 84 because that's when they were like, I think at their height of popularity. But no, we, the world waited many more years until 2008 until we saw the Smurfs movie. I'm wondering if this was, I'm sorry, the Smurfs balloon. I'm wondering if this was the year that the Smurfs movie came out. Um, but I, th I think not because I feel like I saw the Smurfs movie in the theater. No, the Smurfs movie was recent, right? Because I saw it with the kids. I would never have been watching the Smurfs movie by myself, would I? I would have had to have a lot of drinks and they weren't serving drinks at the movie theater uh, in the 80s and I was too young to drink anyway, even with my fake ID. 2008. Now, what about Hello Kitty? When do you think she came into the mix? Because, she, well, this is another late entry. She's popular for many, many decades before, well, American culture really celebrates her and starts using her on apparel and accessories and um, even an airplane. Did you ever see the Hello Kitty airplane? Um, this is another late entry, and it really surprises me because it also represents, like, early anime and, and Japanese culture. But this balloon did not come into the parade until 20, oh, sorry, till. Yeah, 2007. Um, so I feel like that was, I feel like that was remarkably late for Hello Kitty. And this is one of the debuts from today. So this is the one that Joss was screaming about when um, she was sitting next to me. This is Pikachu. And this is, there's been other Pikachus, but this is the Pikachu, the new one that's in the parade. And they reprise characters from time to time to keep it lively, to keep people interested. They keep some of them the same, right, for tradition's sake. Um, but they reprise a lot of them, and this is 
um, no, this isn't a debut. This is 2021. I'm sorry. This is 2021. Maybe they're due for another Pikachu. There's got to be constant Pikachus. There have been a lot, but that's the most recent, not a debut. This is a really weird one. I won't have you guess this one because this is just going to be a really random guess, a shot in the dark. But um, this is an early one at 1933. And again, just making the contrast that some of these early balloons, I don't know if you recognize him. To me, he looks like maybe a circus. Um, what do you call the guy who's in charge of the circus? Um, circus... Um, not like the lion tamer, but the guy, like the maitre d' who's in charge of the whole circus. There's a special name for him, but he doesn't have a top hat on. Maybe this is a character that people would have known in 1933. This is one of the reasons why this is so interesting to me, because people, different people at different times, ringmaster, thank you, that's totally what I was going for. Um, different people at different times recognize different balloons, right? And it means, thanks, Shani, it means something to different people. So, Guess the debut year for Betty Boop. Just guess. It's very surprising. The whole Betty Boop uh, balloon is very surprising. Uh, this is a remarkably late balloon. And I'm going to tell you, wh when you're seeing this balloon, um, everybody was very, was really anticipating Betty Boop because for older, you know, older generations coming to the parade at the time when she debuted, People were very, very, very excited about her because she's such a well-known character. She'd been around for many, many decades, uh, very beloved, very nostalgic, but she did not make her debut until this year, which was 1986. And you know what happened? Like a block after this photo, this happened. She fell down on the crowd and... I mean, people just moved, so that part was okay, but they tried to get her back up, and they could not get her back up. And um, she is the only, she was the, I think, the last balloon in the parade in 1986, um, and she could not complete the parade, which was like, it's kind of a blemish on Macy's because all of the balloons always finish the parade. But this year, 1986, the much-anticipated Betty Boop uh, balloon took a massive dive and could not carry on. Now, one of the things that I'm wondering, and I'm going to get firsthand data on this subject, but I'm going to ask my friend Kim, how hard is it to control the balloon? Is it like the new cars where you have the power steering and you're trying to make a left turn and it's like not letting you? I wonder how hard it is to actually, you know, particularly on windy days and doesn't look windy at all where, where I am here, but I wonder what it's like there. I wonder if wind is a factor. I wonder, um, I wonder what the factors are or how much of the success of the way that the balloon makes its way through the city, right? Completely inflated, like particularly if it's a standing one, which most of them are now. Like that takes some kind of planning, doesn't it? Because my friend Kim just arrived last night to be a handler. So it's not like, you know, I heard somebody say, oh, we practice handling. Well, she didn't. I mean, she just arrived last night, checked in, and then she showed up at the assigned time to pick up the balloon that she was assigned to. But I have to get more data from her because this is just such an, the whole department store history thing, particularly around the holidays, is one of my great passions. I'm always so curious about how the whole thing plays out. And I'm just wondering, what happened with this balloon? Was there a technical problem? Or did a couple of the handlers do something stupid at the same time and it resulted in this? Kind of funny, isn't it? I'm seeing that there's a really naughty um, movie theater. Um, well, it says naughty French something. I'm thinking that's an odd thing to have right prominently, you know, on the route for the balloons. 1986. What about this one? What year do you think the Pink Panther made his debut? It's also very, very late. Um, I remember this. I remember watching this when the Pink Panther appeared because my dad was like, had to be the greatest fan of the Pink Panther movies. He ab he went out of his mind laughing. My mom would often say like, you know, Lou, you're going to give yourself a heart attack. He would laugh so hard at stupid jokes like, does your dog bite? And then Peter Sellers goes to touch the dog and the dog like viciously bites him. And he goes, I thought you said your dog doesn't bite. And he says, that's not my dog. Those kinds of jokes, just like my dad would literally be laying down on the floor. 
incredibly, incredibly not funny. And yet, Kirsten, that's a good guess, 1992. It was a little bit earlier in 1988. Um, and I don't know why there would be a, a sort of resurgence of interest in the Pink Panther in 1988, but I don't remember. There must have been something that happened or something that came out um, around that time that would make it interesting again to feature. Woody Woodpecker also makes a very late debut. You can guess if you want. I'm going to tell you in a minute. Very late for a character. I mean, yes, in the 80s, we were certainly still watching Woody Woodpecker cartoons. <laughs> but I wouldn't, I, I can think of a thousand, I think, other characters uh, in the 80s who were a bit more contemporary at that time. And maybe that speaks to the expected crowd at the parade, because you can see crowds are a lot smaller. At this moment, for this parade, Al Roker said, and they're just concluding it now with a bunch of snow in front of Macy's. I miss Santa. Pull oh, here's Santa. Santa's right on the screen right now. Imagine being the man who plays Santa when he arrives at Macy's at the finale of this parade, and they've got all this artificial snow. I mean, that is really, really amazingly good. He looks really happy, too. But they said with this parade that the crowd was 40 people deep on the sidewalk along the entire route. Uh, and I'm just going to say, good job, Macy's, good job, City of New York, keeping this parade safe today, right? Because isn't that what everyone's thinking? I hope nothing crazy happens in this crazy world. But yep, parade parade is officially over while we've been live, and uh, they did a great job with it. So Woody Woodpecker arrives in 1982, and he's traveling right behind Paul Bunyan, who is afloat, right? It's just interesting. Bart Simpson appears. I don't think he was in it this year. I think Teddy would have alerted me if Bart Simpson was in it. He's on his skateboard in 1990. And, you know, if you're interested in the history of this parade and of this day, of this event, you know, there is a book by History Press on, on the Macy's Day Parade with lots of photography. It's a fantastic book. There's a little information online, but there's more information in books and stuff. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know Bart Simpson was in, the, was in the parade for maybe four or five years, something like that. Because when you find a balloon, either in that History Press book or online, it will tell you the years. And sometimes there's a big interruption of a decade when the character is not popular, and then they bring him back, the same balloon or a reprise of it. Blue um, came into the, the show last year, right? And they said earlier in the show, if your kids have lately been speaking with Australian accents, and I thought, holy crap, my kids are always speaking with, Ital with Australian accents. It's probably because of this cartoon, Blue. Um, this is like a blue, Jay, this is a, um, a blue healer. Like it's a blue healer dog. I know you know that, but it doesn't look like one. So I'm saying that for everyone's benefit. Um, this one came into the show last year, and I saw it in the parade today. So this one is still popular. And as soon as the show sort of flags in popularity, we will not see this character anymore in the parade. I wonder what they do with them when they are done. Clifford the Big Red Dog, this is one I would love to see, um, particularly because the Clifford movie came out a few years ago, and it was great. And Clifford was in New York City, and he was at least this size in the movie. Uh, this was 1995 that we saw Clifford, and he did not have a long run in the parade. Um, and again, it's like, why not? Why, why is um, the Jolly Green Giant in it, but Clifford the Red Dog is not in it? It seems so strange to me. Maybe this was sponsored by Scholastic or something. It looks like it was sponsored by Hess. But I'm thinking maybe sponsorship flags and then the character is retired. This is the new Snoopy that appeared earlier in the show. This wasn't during today's show. This was, uh, this was like a teaser that the Macy's company put out to show us what the new characters were. And I think today it was the character that Kim had, that Monkey Duffy character. It's the Beagle Scout Snoopy, this one. Um, it was something in Chubb. It was a it was a blue cat that was holding like a, it was a, a sort of Japanese cartoon. A blue cat holding like a cereal box, and the baby Yo Yoda. I think those were no, and the Drake and the new Disney movie about Mr. Mallard. That was it. I think there were five new balloons this year. So it's interesting too to get kind of an idea of which which balloons are going to be premiered, right? And then to actually see them coming up the street from a block away, really, really exciting. And to have them showing, um, you should tell Jocelyn the dog show is starting. It's a big day on TV on Thanksgiving Day. We're not sports people, so we watch the Macy's Day Parade and then the dog show. Um, 
I can't think of anything better than that really except food, which is where we're headed next. I just want to show you what I'm going to bring over to my sister's house. Um, we're going to get, we're going to get our jazz together. Oh gosh, this needle nanny was so tough. I couldn't get my needle off of it. I'm still working on my Jane Austen. This is something that's coming up soon. I had a bunch more orders for the advent calendar. So those are going out. I had to restock the advent calendar. So I had to reorder and express a bunch more of the bags, right? Because the whole first wave sold out. And now I think there's probably maybe three, something like that left because um, a bunch more sold. So they've been going and I haven't been keeping a close eye on it. But if you're looking for that Jane Austen advent calendar, we are starting a very British Christmas um, starting on December 1st, right? Doesn't mean you have to get the calendar by December 1st. If you love the calendar and it's available in the middle of December, you should get it. It is overstuffed with antique paisley, velvet, wool, beautiful yarns. It's all fancy stuff. And there are a bunch of projects that I'm going to do videos of for all of us that have to do with the materials in the advent calendar. Um, this is my Jane Austen that I've been working on here. And I'm just waiting to decide on the color of this little vessel. I think it's going to be pink. So I'm kind of choosing that. Um, Jay says, the bluey show is drawn in colors the dog can see. Oh, that's really interesting because the dog can't see all colors, I guess. I think, I think I've heard that before about dogs. What about it, Buttons? What can you see, honey? Buttons is going to come make a cameo. But I've been really enjoying this. I told you I was I hooked the bust in blacks and I hooked the background in all sock weight yarn or um, um, fingering yarn. And then I've got my little berries that I think I'm going to pull out because I really do want more pink in this piece. So this is coming together. I'm going to bring this to work on. Come here, honey. You want to be Thanksgiving pup? Come here. Come on up. Here he is. This Thanksgiving puppy says, Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'm going over to Jessica's house. That's my sister. We're going to see Gami, my mom. She's going to be over there. She's going to feed me so many scraps under the table. I'm probably going to barf like the dog in uh, Christmas vacation. Oh, he does smell good. He smells like a little angel. So, hey, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. One more thing I wanted to say on the way out. Um, you know how with this Jane Austen pattern, I hooked the bust of it, the silhouette, in black uh, pantyhose? Well, I dye all the pantyhose that I have, right? So guess what? This is not good news to end the show. Um, everybody in the rug hooking business who ever sold pantyhose or used them for kits was getting them from Hanes. Um, they had a program that was called Waste Hose, and that's where you could get pantyhose that weren't $3 a pair, right? Because I was putting like 20 into a bag for people, and that was a product that I sold for years. They don't do that program anymore. Their plant in, I think it was Clarksville, Arkansas, closed, and that's where the waste hose were coming from, and they are not continuing that program. So two things. Um, I don't stock. I'm very sorry, but I don't stock pantyhose anymore. I'm still going to hook with them because it is my favorite thing to hook with, um, but I'm going to have to buy them full price or buy them from Temu or buy them from Amazon or Alibaba or one of these where they don't cost a fortune because it is my favorite thing to hook with. But at this moment, and this is part two, unless I can figure out someone else who stocks imperfect pantyhose in white that are perfect for us that I can buy wholesale, like these came in refrigerator sized boxes, right? I would get like three refrigerated boxes. You send them money, they would send you a huge amount um, of tights. And it worries me a lot that that is not happening anymore because I'm really having a hard time finding someone else who does that. If you know anybody who might do that, I want to continue hooking in the Grenfell style and talking about it. And I wanted to continue stocking that product because it was dead cheap, right? It was, it was very inexpensive. I don't want to make you sad if you didn't get them, but on ribbon candy hooking to buy a bag of like 20 stockings was like a silly amount of money. And you would be able to finish like a really large part of your piece, if not the whole thing, with 20 stockings. I mean, really. So let me know if you have any data on that subject. In the meantime, I'm going to finish my last stocking piece for, the, for this era. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody. It was great spending some time with you this morning. I'm also going to transfer my uh, Tony Sarg pattern onto backing. And um, I'm going to work that out. And I'm probably going to put two more balloons on the sides of them and just continue that skyline across. I just, I'm going to ask the kids what characters they'd want to see on the sides of that balloon. And I might not be able to show it a ton because they might choose characters that are copyright characters. So I'm just going to have it on my wall. Uh, you know what I mean? Because uh, whatever characters are important to them right now, it's a piece for this moment. 
Happy Thanksgiving. I hope that you eat so much that you need to unzip your pants and that you hate yourself for five minutes and then you realize it was all worth it because this is the main day of the year. That it is not only allowed, but it is encouraged and expected uh, that you overeat and are just generally disgusting, right? I'm going to do it too. And um, yeah, I hope you've been training for it, right? That's why we went out to eat last night. I hope that you're training for it. So I will see you soon. Happy Thanksgiving. I will be back with you tomorrow uh, with my friend Rebecca Martin on Friday p.m. for uh, cocktail night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will be looking at her new book, which is about to come out everywhere. Uh, is being published, has been published by Ampre Press, Rogue Cooking Magazine, has so far been delivered to book club members, but um, yeah, it will soon be out for everybody to buy. We'll be looking at that live with Rebecca tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Cocktail Time. Happy Thanksgiving. Bon appetit. 